This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at projecting a curve onto a surface. Then from that curve, extrude a post. And that post will extrude out of our original lamp post. To start, I'm going to create a NURBS primitive circle. And we'll open the tool options just to make sure that our settings are good. And I only need the defaults, so I'll just choose Reset Settings and make sure everything looks good. We'll choose Create. The curve is created there in the center of my world. I'm just going to raise it up so that it's approximately where I want my post to go. And we'll rotate this in the Z. Do 90 degrees so that it is perpendicular to my post. And we're just about ready to project. I'm going to open the tool options for project curve on surface. And the very first option there asks me or tells me either active view or surface normal. I want to go with the active view. Currently my view is set to the perspective view, which means that it's going to try and project this curve along the camera view, which means it's going to distort that curve. So I want to switch my active view to the side view, where we can see the curve is nice and planar. It's perfectly lined up with my lamp post. So with that, we'll choose Project. We must have the lamp post itself selected. Does not matter the order that you have. You can select either one, the post first or last. Then choose Project. And we'll switch back to our perspective view and take a look at the results. When the curve is projected, it's projected to the front as well as to the back of the surface. So when we projected it based upon its current scale here, it attached to the back of it. Well, that kind of creates not only an awkward curve, but this circle is a little bit too big for the diameter of the post that we want. So we'll just scale that down and we can see that it pulls those two curves apart. And that's a little bit more appropriate. My next step will be to draw another curve coming off of here so that I can extrude this particular curve outward. But before I do that, when I select the curve, I can see that the curve is actually broken up into two separate curves. The opposite curve on the back of the post is fine. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. The reason for this if I select my lamp post and we'll go into shaded mode, we can see that there is a much harder line, a darker line, a bolder line, where I projected that curve. This is the seam of my NURBS surface. If we can remember, the NURBS surface is a square or a rectangle, and in order to create that look of a completed surface, it simply wraps back around and puts the two opposite ends together. So we have that seam there. And when we projected our curve across that seam, it broke the curve into two, basically adding a seam to the curve as well. We can fix this pretty easily by moving the seam of my surface itself. I'm going to select the isoparm of the post okay, where I want the seam to go. And we'll put it onto the back of the post, someplace kind of out of the way. And with that isoparm selected, I'll choose Edit NURBS, Move Seam. You can see the actual surface update as it moves that seam over there. It gets rebuilt. Now, when I look at my curve, it is also fixed. And it is one single curve. 
And that's the great part about having history is that it goes all the way through that history stack and corrects everything. So I didn't need to undo or restart deleting the curve. All I needed to do was move that seam and everything else updated. Now we can draw that extra extrusion curve or path for the extrude to follow. I'll draw that in the front view. And we'll start, we'll choose create and we'll open up the CV curve tool. Just want to make sure that we're set to cubic and all of my other settings are good. Again, these are just the default settings. And we'll choose an approximate place to start. We'll just kind of get in the center of that curve. And hit enter when we're done. And I'm gonna go back to my perspective view so I can see it a little bit better. And we'll select the curve and the extruding curve. I'll choose surfaces and we'll open the options for extrude. And what I want to make sure of is that I'm on tube, okay, as opposed to flat, which would create a very flat surface. We want a tubular surface. And I want the orientation to follow the path itself. So we'll make sure that path direction is selected. Everything else is good, and we can, of course, modify these settings after in the attribute editor through our history. Choose extrude, and we get a nice post coming off of there. Now, the number of isoparms that are created on this surface is a result of the control vertices on the curve itself. The extra CVs that show up, these are the tangent CVs, okay, and they just kind of control the end points of our curve itself. They don't get isoparms. They're not represented by an isoparm. So if we wanted an additional isoparm on our surface, we would have to add an additional CV here, okay? So you end up having two CVs always at the end of a curve that are not going to be represented in your surface. But we can also always rebuild our surface at any point in time if we need to add additional geometry to it. I want to do one more thing to our post, and that's taper the end down a little bit so that it's much smaller here as it reaches its end than it does at its beginning. And I can do this by going into the attribute editor and going to the extrude tab and altering the scale. Now the scale here affects its overall scale based on the length of the actual extrusion. So by reducing this down, we can see that it'll taper the end point of there. Of course, going the opposite way, we could also flare that out. We'll just taper it down just a little bit. We'll just type in 0.6. And I think that'll work for us. And this concludes our video on projecting curves.